Yo guys, what the hell is going on? You're watching CSS for Beginners Lesson 36 and in this video we're going to dive right into the box model. That's coming up. <laughs> Alright then, so what exactly is this box model? Well, the box model is a way that elements represent themselves on a page in terms of space. Okay, and say for example we have an element in the middle. Any block level element could be a p tag. And we give that p tag a specific width and a specific height. That's going to control the horizontal and vertical uh, spacing that that element takes up on a page, right? Now, in addition to that, we have a few other properties which control its spacing also. And the first thing is the padding, which is an internal spacing. Okay, so within the boundaries of that element, it has padding from the element edge. And the element edge itself can have a border, can be one pixel thick, and that's the gray line here, by the way, or 20 pixels thick, however thick you want it to be. That also controls the space within the document. And finally, we've got this margin property, which we saw in the last lesson, which controls the space between different elements on a page. Okay, so that's the box model at a glance. What we're going to do now is jump into the code and have a look at an example. <laughs> All right, guys, so here I am back in the code. And as you can see, I've replaced the previous content with these two div tags here. They've both got a class of box and then just this little bit of text in the div tags too, okay? Now, I'll give this class of box a few different properties. The first one is the margin of 30 pixels. Remember, that's the external kind of space in between elements. Uh, the second one is the padding, which is the internal space. And that's got a padding of 30 pixels. The third one is the border. And I'm saying I want that to be solid and one pixel thick and color of 000 in hex code, which is black. And then I want it to have a width of 400 pixels and a height of 200 pixels. So we've got two of those box classes. And we're going to look at this now in a browser. All right, so you can see now this is the border, uh, the content in between. And we can't see specifically how big the margins are, how big the padding is, you know, the width, that kind of thing. But Google browser, Chrome browser, has this cool thing uh, within its dev tool. So we go down to inspect element on this. And if we hover over one of these elements, now we can see here, okay, um, the blue box in the middle, that is the content height and width. Okay, so that's the how I think it was 400 by 200, there it is, 400 by 200 pixels. That blue box represents that space, okay? Now the green color on there represents the padding and that's 20 pixels. So you can see all around the blue, we've got a padding of 20 pixels. And then just beyond that is the border. Um, you can see that faint line, that's one pixel. And then all around that, it's a margin of 20 pixels. Now you might look at the right-hand side of that and say, well, hang on, that's a huge margin on the right-hand side. Um, and that's because there's nothing else in that space. So automatically, you know, it's applying that margin. Uh, because this is a block level element, um, each block level element occupies its own space in the document on top of each other. So it's occupying all the, the space on that row, if you like. Okay, so it's using a margin to kind of fill up that space. So that is the box model in action. And Google Chrome also has this cool thing down here. You can see the box model down here in more detail. And you can see the main content here in blue is 400 by 200 pixels. Then if I hover over this bit here, it goes green. That's the padding of 30 pixels. The border is one pixel thick, and then the margin is 30 pixels thick, okay? Now then, you may be looking at this and thinking, well, we've got two elements here, okay? And when I'm hovering over the margin, you can see that the this space here, okay, when I hover over it again, um, is 30 pixels in height, okay, that margin. Now, we've got 30 pixels on the bottom one as well. How is it we've not got 60 pixels in total between the two elements? Because we've got 30 on this one and 30 on this one. Well, that is a thing called the vertical margin collapse. And I'm not going to cover that now. I'm going to do that in a lesson coming up in the future. But essentially, what happens is when you've got two vertical margins, they collapse and the higher of the two is taken as the margin, okay? I'll go through this later in more detail in a different video. Um, I just want to give you a brief overview now. Okay, so that's the box model in action. Um, what I'm going to do now is just see what happens when we take off the width properties and the height properties. So let's get these two properties here and delete them. So we're not specifying a width and we're not specifying a height. So let's open this back up in the browser and see what's gone on. 
All right, so what's happened here is the elements have stretched to essentially fill the horizontal space here. And that's because they're block level elements. And essentially every block level, uh, level element occupies this own, its own space in the document and takes up, if you don't specify the width or height property, a width of the full kind of document width there. So if we inspect this element again, you can see now we've got the margin, okay, of 20 pixels. Uh, we've got the padding, uh, sorry, 30 pixels, the padding of 30 pixels. Then the content is the thin blue strip in the middle, okay? So the height is specified automatically by the height of the content, which is just the the, the 12 or 14 pixels of height that the, uh, the P tag is, okay? So they're taking up the full width of the the parent element, okay? So that's what happens when you don't specify a width. Now, this is not to be confused with putting width 100% because that will be slightly different, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, although that's, uh, oops, although that this here is essentially occupying 100% of this width here, apart from the margin which you specified, if we put specifically a width of 100%, you would expect that to be the same, right? Let's view it in a browser and see what happens then. Okay, now you can see it's gone over. And you might be sitting there thinking, well, what, you know, I've specified a width of 100%. What the hell's happening here? And this is what a lot of designers start out doing when they first start with CSS. Uh, they get confused with the box model. And the reason it's doing this is because this width here, if we right click, this blue width here is giving itself a width of 100%. Okay, so just the blue bit. Okay, and 100% would be, oops, all of this area here right, all of this parent element width. So it's given itself that full 100% width. Now on top of that, it's got the padding of 30 pixels, the border of one pixel and the margin of 30 pixels as well. Okay, so it's actually 100% plus all of that other stuff which is causing it to overflow here. All right, so when we say width 200 pixels, the overall width is not 200 pixels. That's just the width of that little blue bit in the middle, the actual content. On top of that, we've got 30 pixels um, on each side of margin. So 30 pixels on the left, 30 pixels on the right. And then we've got padding of 30 pixels on the left and 30 pixels on the right. And then we've got this border of one pixel on the left and one pixel on the right. So in total, it's essentially 200 in width plus 30 on the left margin, 30 on the right margin plus 30 on the left padding plus 30 on the right padding plus one pixel uh, border on the left plus one pixel border on the right. So the overall width there is all of this combined, which is 260, 320, 322 pixels, right? Okay, so you have to be really careful when you're specifying your widths and your paddings. Just, you know, pay attention to all the different properties you're applying to it. So let's just kind of view this in a browser to see if that totting or padded up. I said 322 pixels. So let's see if we right click this and we hover over it. You can see now it's saying 262 pixels. However, that's just taking into account the uh, border, the content of 200 pixels and the padding of 30 pixels. It's not showing you the additional 30 pixels of margin on each side. So we'd add that additional 60 pixels. That's making it then 322 pixels. Okay, so this might be all a, bit, uh, a little complicated at first to get your head around, but just refer back to Google Chrome DevTools if you're ever wondering why things are overflowing. And it specifies here for you exactly what's going on, okay? So you're probably going to have a few questions about this. If you have any of those, feel free to comment down below and I'll answer all of those as soon as I can. Um, if not, please like, subscribe or share if you enjoy these videos. And I'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to look at the margin a little more in depth. I'll see you guys then.